Welcome to another edition of Spiritual Encounters. I'm your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper. If you're in the Atlanta area, Christ for All Nations here in a crusade on the 4th and 5th of March, I believe on the week after that, after people are going to get saved, they're going to need to get uh, healed and sanctified and all the rest of it. If you're in the North Georgia area on the 12th of March, be sure to check out a, a one-day conference, which is actually based on my book, what was I thinking, at Freedom's Light Church of God in Ballground, Georgia. It's a free event, freely been given, freely give. So you can discover the connections between your thoughts and health and remove those roadblocks that hinder joyful living. I'm going to apply God's principles to, to wholeness to help you do this. Um, you know, there's no such thing as an incurable disease because all things are possible with God. So I hope you can uh, share us uh, with us in, in that uh, event. Uh, again, that's at uh, Freedom's Light Church of God, Ball Ground, on the 12th of March. And I'm just so delighted to have our friend back on the show tonight. Um, and oh, by the way, I was supposed to mention this. I should mention that Bob and Lori Cully and Angel Edmiston will um, also be included in that lineup of speakers for that uh, um, event in, in Ball Ground at Freedom's Light. So be sure to check it out. And uh, tonight, I'm really excited to hear Dr. Joy Pubiak. She's the author of numerous books at this point. She's involved in researching biblical prophecy, certainly a subject matter that people on the fringe are interested in. Um, she consults with people from around the world on all sorts of issues and current events involving science and religion. She serves as a consultant in education with MUFON um, regarding all the spiritual and religious aspects of paranormal and UFO experiences. And I've, I've listened to her on some other shows, um, and I'm just so delighted and pleased the way she was able to um, just love on people in the secular world that were asking her questions, and she was able to come back with a, you know, be prepared to give an answer to anybody that asks you, and she's there for that. She's also, um, just just so you know, she um, has a complete uh, biographical history featured in Who's Who in, in the World, Who's Who in America, Who's who in American women? Who's who in South and Southwest? Who's who in American education? Who's who in Georgia? She's a member of the National Society of Daughters of the American Revolution, and I like that a lot because you see, the Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ in Nazareth, He was a revolutionary. For example, there are many um, times all through our Holy Guidebook to the Supernatural. You know, when you come clean and repent before the Lord Jesus. Remember he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is it near. <clears throat> and I recall that story of the prodigal son. Remember that boy that wanted his inheritance whilst his father still lived and, and then he wasted his wealth on ungodly living. And uh, that young man committed all kinds of sins and yet he, he said in his heart, you know, I'm going to go back to my father and, and just ask him for his forgiveness and maybe he'll make me like one of his hired servants so I won't die of hunger. So his motivation here was an exactly, <clears throat> completely pure, and yet the, the father in this parable who represents Papa God runs to him in his filthy swine's stinking state and, and brings him home, treating him like a prince. I mean, that's this agape love that we're talking about. That's representing the mercy, grace, and love of Christ that the Lord shows us in his word that he heals and he delivers people in all sorts of ways. Jesus healed think about right jesus yeshua healed in all kinds of ways in places and situations and just as he did then he's doing it today and sometimes jesus spoke the word sometimes he reached out placed his hand on, on, on you sometimes jesus said you know according to your faith be done unto you sometimes he used mud and spit and by the way i i, I was always curious about that and i of the years of research it seems jesus used mud and spit because the jewish book of the mishnah it was written, to heal a blind man on the Sabbath is prohibited to inject wine in his eyes. It's also prohibited to make mud and spizzle and smear it on his eyes. It's Shabbat 108 verse 20. So see, the, the Mishnah was the first major writings of the Jewish oral traditions, which was called the, you know, oral, the oral Torah. And if we Christians, we born again spirit-filled Christians, are not careful to handle the word of God with the same... Um, mercy, grace, and love that he applies to us, you know, replacing the word of God with the oral word of man. Um, that, that's doctrines of men and devils and tickling people's ears today. That's what's going on because God said what he means and he means what he said. And so 
Here we see the Lord Jesus making a powerful statement of what he thinks of traditions of man, using modern spittle to heal that blind man. Our Lord Jesus, see, he was a revolutionary, and his mercy, grace, and love, it's radical. So I'm hoping we're going to have a radical uh, program tonight with Dr. Joy. Let's bring it on, because if I start sharing all your accomplishments, there won't be enough time for this interview. Welcome, Dr. Joy. Thank you so much, Casper, for allowing me to be on your show tonight. I'm looking really forward to sharing some more information in regard to my research about all the things that are really happening in the world today and how it all ties to end times and the days in which we are living. Well, let's just go right for the jugular then. Um, (laughs) There was an article published recently in the American Journal of Modern Physics which appears to suggest in the strongest terms possible, we're not alone in the universe. That's what they're saying. Uh, It's apparent the the detection, they're they're using inverted telescopes with concave lenses. Uh, These concave lenses, scientists are claiming they're able to discern what otherwise would be considered invisible terrestrial entities. I think, Dr. Joy, they're they're talking about seeing evil spirits. They're talking about spirits in Nephilim. What's your take on that? Uh, Yes, Casper, I do. You know, I had seen this particular article and uh, actually had made contact to the facility to find out a little bit more about the Centelli telescopes that they are selling that have the different uh, lenses. And I find it quite interesting because uh, a number of years ago, uh, I had the opportunity to look at some photographs that a person had done using infrared and using some different pixels and cameras in which they had set it up and they had just let it just film areas of the sky on a daily basis. And what we were seeing uh, probably two or three years ago were these entities, these things that you could not see with the normal eye. And at first, you know, we thought we were picking up something that was like maybe an insect or a fly or a bird or whatever. But what we were picking up, we finally realized, was something that was actually coming in and out of the ground. Uh, and, And so at that point in time, I began to really take note that there's a lot of ability to cloak and I did a little bit of research into how, in, you know, the infrared and, and how our eyes, uh, human eye actually sees in the spectrum of light. And as you well know, we can only see in certain levels of that spectrum. And then anything that's above it or below, we can't see it. It doesn't mean that it's not there. It's just that our eye cannot behold that. No different than if we don't have a microscope, we can't see bacteria. And if we don't have a telescope, we can't really see into the heavens with our naked eye. So understanding that even bending light, there was some work that was done uh, in some of the major universities where light was actually bent. And so you could bend the light and put an object in front of a person. If the light was bent, it would be sitting right in front of them. They could not see it because their Mm. eye could not pick, pick that up. So the fact that uh, they've come up with these telescopes that are looking at these different types of lenses to be able to look at the world around us, it only makes sense. I mean, literally, in the past, you know, we had no idea what might have been causing people to get really, really sick until we had the invention of the um, telescope, to, I mean, the microscope, to be able to look at what it is to have bacteria and and that kind of things that grow that we, we don't see on a normal basis. And and so now that we have this technology, I think it's time, you know, it, it's time for the real truth to start coming out. We're living in the end of days, and the Bible tells us that this, this knowledge is going to increase, and we're going to be able to, to have a better understanding. I mean, it's, it's kind of like we're being shown really what the Bible has already told us, and I've said this many times on radio shows. It's not that the Bible has not told us these things. They've been the, the scripture has tell, has told us we're we're here that they're spiritual beings that they're all around us that they're watchers. I mean, you can go into the whole depth of that, and now science is catching up to prove that. Uh, I used to talk about this on radio shows, and I would try to explain that you're being watched twenty four seven, and it would make people so nervous. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you cannot hide. You literally cannot hide. Because your body is a vibratory mass of atoms that's put together in such a way that you have a frequency. And that frequency changes depending on what you're participating in. So if you're not doing what's right, uh, it's literally singing at at a terrible tune. And since you and I are both musicians, we can understand when something's in tune and when something's out of tune. And so I think that... Um, Even slightly out of tune. Like this is important. 
uh, you're right. I mean, e- even as musicians, when something's slightly odd to tune, it might not even bother the common you know person's ear, but it would bother a musician. Um, oh yes, because we would immediately know. Oh, that's not an E chord, or that's not an E, or or, yeah. or whatever. A I semitone, mean, even, you know, it's a, a semitone. So yes, it is. <laughs> in between so if, if you if you really pay attention to how things are, let's say harmonically set up, and then if there's any tune difference, then you will pick up on it. And and I, I've always said that God is the great conductor. This was His creation, and so when anything gets out of tune, He immediately knows what's out of tune. And the problem is, is that Satan, because he was the covering cherub, he literally knows when things are out of tune, too. And I know that, you know, your work has always been to to explain about these spiritual encounters. And in my my latest research, my Beguile series, I go into what spiritual deception is all about and what these encounters can really mean and how they're manifesting uh, today in a very powerful way. I mean, just looking at the recent... Uh, halftime of the uh, Super Bowl 50, Uh, Mm -hmm. there was so much going on, and, you know, it was kind of low-key as as far as being dramatic like it has been in the past, but oh my gracious, the red flags that were just going up as I was taking notes on, on what was happening, because what I'm seeing is that there is a technique of teaching the masses how to receive enlightenment that only was used a long time ago for, let's say, the Illuminati or secret society uh, members so that they could become illuminated, illuminated and then have these spiritual encounters in which they were dealing with um, the, uh, the spiritual world that's all around us. And so today it seems like what's happening on TV and what I'm seeing in music and TV and types of beats that's in music and how it's being kind of a program thing that I'm, that I'm picking up on that a lot of this has a mantra going on. You know, you could look at the mm-hmm. the way the people were moving on the football field and how it was around a cross and it was in a circle, and you can kind of see that this meditation mantra is kind of being taught. And, you know, uh, even Beyonce was saying in a pure interview that she was literally given over her consciousness to some kind of universal force and that she had actually named, I think, something like Sasha. And then you see that it's promoting a universal peace, kind of like through a new world order, because immediately you could see Chris Martin's little armband that he had on that was the lead singer for Coldplay that said Global Citizen. Mm -hmm. And so then when you look at the way the cross was designed, you could see that there was a lot of forbidden knowledge uh, in the fact that as above, so below, and that your ends of those crosses were six-pointed stars. And all of that in itself, along with the way that Beyonce was dancing, was like a sexual ritual. Well, what happens is when you add all that together and you use, like we know, harmonic tones in music at various frequencies, that you can actually stimulate the brain and open up the pineal gland and let Satan really come in and and kind of connect to you through a kind of a universal collective consciousness is what I call it in my book. Because any time that you open yourself up by seeing and participating and seeing this kind of stuff, you have to be real careful. And I know uh, one of the most, I guess, most satanic things that I had uh, had to study in the last, I guess, couple of uh, weeks has been the release of David uh, Bowie's, uh, or Bowie, however people like to pronounce that, his uh, latest album, Dark Star. I have just never in my life seen something so satanic, and I would tell anybody that has wants to even do the research on it, don't watch that thing and, and keep, you know, if you're going to do research, leave the music off and watch it, and then if you want to listen mm. to the music and not watch, you, you need to break it down where you're not listening and watching, because I fully believe that these kinds of things are being programmed into your brain. And I brought that up a long time ago in a book that I did called Eden, the Knowledge of Good and Evil 666, where I had found like uh, techniques of these new video games where um, gu- Guitar Hero, which you and I love music, and that was one of the first things I thought, oh, how neat, you know, is that going to teach you how to play guitar? And then I realized that it's got a fret, and it's got it running at a certain level, and it's got these beats going, and then these cymbals are going on that are, you know, skulls and, and whatever. And so what I was seeing in that is that you're 
you're doing something like a long time ago when we would hypnotize people, you would watch a circle going around and around and around and around while somebody talked to you at a certain, you know, monotone voice and being focused on that. Well, what happens is in these little video games, when you get so focused and then you've got the music at a certain beat at a certain frequency, and most people put earphones on, which really throws it into the brain and makes you have, you can even get phantom beats. In other words, you can get some music that's coming in on the left ear that might be a little bit different beat on the uh, right ear that will form a phantom beat uh, or a binaural beat in your brain, which will set you up to have experiences that are like you had, you know, smoked marijuana or you had taken well, heroin that's what the or shaman, whatever. The shaman would do that. Uh, yes, you know, it is. Get... And, 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 and that's the thing is that that's just been going on again <laughs> a long, long, long time. Because like you mentioned, the, the shamans, that's what they did. They used a continuous drum beat to drive people into that frenzy of chanting, chanting, chanting. And when you do that, it does open up this pineal gland which is what the Eastern religions were also teaching when they told people to sit in a cobra position and literally use a mantra to to really mess up the harmonic frequency of your body as it should be and open it up to a frequency that would allow the serpent to climb up the spine. And I truly believe, uh, Pastor Casper, it was to let them, you know, to let these evil spirits get into what I believe is your holy of holies, and that is that the um, the pineal gland sets itself up in the brain, in the hemispheres of the brain, much like the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. And if we are in the image of of Christ, and we know that he told the Pharisees and Sadducees that he was going to raise the temple back up, and of course, many times I have told this, that they thought he was going to raise up the temple that took them 40 years to build, and they thought it was hilariously funny, you know, that he wouldn't be able to do that. Well, he was talking about his body. And the more that I have studied that from a scientific level... The brain is literally set up like the Ark of the Covenant. And when you really look at that, you can't really deny from a scientific standpoint that it doesn't look like the the pineal gland kind of sits in that little area of the forehead that's right in the center and that these these parts of the brain, which we know are the the cerebellum, that that comes around it. And if you cross-section it, it looks like the same thing as the Ark of the Covenant, where you've got the pineal gland of the mercy seat, and then you've got these wings that form around it. Well, if that's the case, then it would make all the sense in the world why we were told over and over and over again to know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And if you defile that temple of God, you know, God is going to destroy you because that temple is holy. And you. And it says in Corinthians 3.16 that that temple that you are a part of that. So if you think about well, what would be Satan's greatest uh, accomplishment would be to be able to overtake you by taking and putting him, the serpent, into your holy of holies. Mm. And the more that I've studied this pineal gland, uh, you know, I see that there is a lot about it because um, no other animals on earth, you know, humans are very unique. We did not come from an ape. Um, you know, my work shows that. That's a big joke because we have a cerebral cortex. It makes us different from any other species on earth, and that cerebral cortex allows for us to be intelligent, to have thought processes, to have the capability of language and consciousness, and then the reason in between, you know, good and evil. But the, the thing about it, that we have also got 223 genes that's not found in any other life form. And so these genes do not have a, a evolutionary tree that people have tried to make it seem that Charles Darwin knew what he was talking about. Well, we're the only, you know, species that has this like this. Mm-hmm. And I find it very interesting that, you know, that God established an institution of marriage for us. In other words, he expected us to have something just a little bit different than he did the rest of creation. So, you know, it was not um, just a a quick form the Garden of Eden and and put two people in it and and just kind of throw us out of paradise and, and whatever. There's a lot more going into the fact that, you know, our Holy of Holies and us being in his image and him blowing into us, you know, the breath of life and us having what I believe is a very uh, close relationship with God and that the Holy Spirit is a part of us, that if we don't pay attention to that and realize that structurally 
we may it may be in an image of the very temple that he constructed, you know, using Moses to give us indication of why those areas are off limits. That our that our communication should be a one on one directly with commun you know, with the Creator and not doing some kind of um, you know, shaman dance or a little right. whatever to bring about something uh to our body, you know, like like I said, sitting sitting and chanting in a copper position or bowing fifty times to an idol or, you know, doing anything like that because that was not what you know, God intended, but I do think that when people say, well, Joy, if they didn't know um, the difference between believing in this religion or that religion, how would, how would somebody know? And I'm like, there's no doubt in my mind that the Creator designed us, He's put the Holy Spirit in there to connect to us, and that He is our comforter, our teacher, constant companion, it says. So I do believe that He placed a beacon, you know, within us, so that if you're on a desert island, if you're in the middle of a storm, if you're surrounded by, you know, your terrible enemy, if you're in the lowest valley, you're able to commune with him because it says that we are never alone, that God is always with us. So I, I really believe that we were created with a biological ability to listen to our conscience and to learn the truth from it, you know, whether we are a, a small child or whether we are an old person that we are constantly being told if we do something wrong, that somebody, mm. that something in our mind will say, oh, now you, you shouldn't have done that. It's the problem is how long do you go before you get that right? Do you just carry that along and then it builds on and builds on and builds on to the point that um, you don't think you're doing wrong, which I do believe that people can continue to sin to the point that they see that they do, know, do not sin and they have no reason for... Um, Having their mind pierced like a hot iron. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I think happens, because you can just go to the point that you don't think that there's any reason for you to, you know, to come to Christ or to ask for forgiveness, because you don't think you're doing anything wrong. So the further that you get away and the more evil communications that you corrupt your mind with, you're getting to the point that I think that, that the Bible has told us that there's going to be a severing of that and and the pineal gland is something that it can be remotely controlled, and that's the thing that worries me more than anything is that I had always wondered about the 144,000 at the end of days how they would be able to live during the Great Wrath and not be overcome by the Antichrist, and I found it interesting that they were sealed in their forehead. Hmm. And when you get the understanding that that gland that sits in your forehead is what can be remotely controlled from the outside using a variety of things from... Uh, uh, beaming ELF waves at you to to literally controlling you like a computer, and and really connecting you to a universal collective consciousness, much like a beehive. And that's why some of the secret societies have always used the pyramid or the beehive to explain how the ruler uh, or the great all-seeing eye or the queen bee, whatever they put at the top controls the worker bees. I mean, you mm -hmm. take a, a beehive and you mess up the queen bee, and those bees don't know what to do. They just run around in circles. But as long as she's in control, they have some collective consciousness that's connecting them directly to that queen bee. And I see that happening now because the more that you turn the TV on and you watch things like these, uh, uh, whether it be the Grammys or whether it be uh, the Super Bowl or the Olympic ceremonies, they're doing all kinds of, like, sorcery <laughs> and rituals, you know, right into your eyes. And the more you participate in that and you're not aware of it and you uh, participate in the video games and you, you listen to really this techno music that's got these certain beats, if you're, if you're not really paying attention, then you're kind of filling your head with uh, things that are really able to cause you to lose capability to ever really hear the Spirit of God. And and that worries me because I think that there's going to come a day that God's going to catch away his bride, and then the 144,000, they've got to be sealed in that forehead. But if you're not one of those, one of the two, then your conscience is going to be absolutely seared. And, and and it really does concern me that right now people need to be paying attention to how Satan is playing the game uh, because it's a big game. 
and and it's coming at us more and more and more and more and more than I've ever ever seen in doing this research. I mean, it's just every day I see how the game is getting just a little bit more intense, a little bit more intense. And if you mm-hmm. don't wake up to it, you're you're liable to get so down the rabbit hole you can't ever see the day of you know a lot of day again. Yes, our friend Dr. Chuck Moisler said it's a managed agenda. Um, were you talking about the penal gland? I remember from a uh, research I did for my book, what was they thinking that uh, the penal gland also releases melatonin and that helps the body recognize when it's time to, to sleep. Um, so, you know, again, here's, here's, um, God has just done a phenomenal thing here with, with creation um, to, to be able to regulate all these issues, all these times and seasons. And um, here we are entering into that final phase, we think. Uh, the evidence oh, is overwhelming. Right. There's no doubt in my mind because even those uh, hormones that the pineal gland you know, releases, the serotonin, you know, that's one of the main things that really keeps you psychologically intact. You'll find you know, people who have serious difficulty with depression, bipolar problems, and things like that. They're deficient in serotonin. serotonin and dopamine, yes. It is, is a problem. And then, of course, you know, I did some research with uh, uh, the work that was done about DMT in which they were able to give people certain drugs and they would have these, these experiences and actually see these kind of entities that a lot of people will say that they see when they're participating in, let's say, smoking dope or uh, taking heroin or whatever, that they have these entities, which I believe are from the spiritual realm. Now, if you, you know, you turn on the History Channel or something like that, they'll try to tell you that they're just uh, our alien visitors from a foreign planet. But, Casper, you and I well know that these things have been with us the whole time. These these beings that say that they were from outer space, and we even go back to Sitchin's work, um, you know, back in the Samaritan uh, cuneiform text, and that's in the clay tablets. When they said they came down from heaven, they were thrown out of heaven. You know, these were fallen angels. That's where, you, like you mentioned earlier, with the uh, Nephilim, Nephilim, what, well, ge- however yeah, you the Genesis six four account. Yes. Yes, that they literally were put down here with us, and yes, they were from the heavens, but they weren't from like Mars, and they were not from like Pluto. They were in a spiritual realm of the heavens, so when you read that, if you're not understanding that they weren't ancient, ancient alien astronauts, they weren't astronauts. They were fallen angels, and, and when they had this relationship with the women on Earth and produced these giants, literally they were, you know, when they were born, they started just tearing everything apart and drinking blood, and they were cannibalistic, and they were, they were and ruining God's and total creation, the reason for the flood. Right. And, they, you know, evidence is showing they've returned, and then new versions, they're among us today. But somebody really needs to tell someone, like, uh, pray for Sir Richard Dawkins to get this one right, because he's convinced that superior intelligent beings from outer space somehow came and created life here, which is... The, you know, the panspermia theory that so many people, young people, have been buying into. But, you know, I, I, I think about things like Second Kings, um, it talks in, in chapter 6, you know, I think 17, it says, And Elisha prayed, it said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes, and the young men saw uh, a mountain that was full of horses and chariots and a fire around, you know, about them. Um, again, you know, I just have to pray, Lord, open our eyes of faith that we can see with your, you know, your perspective and, and understand you've got a, your protection, you know, your divine protection over your believers. Just like um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I mean, coming out of a fiery furnace, doing the impossible, Daniel in the line, then it goes on and on. You know, the Israelites crossing the Red Sea, all the miraculous miracles uh, that Jesus, and, and then there was, he left just um, common everyday Christians like us. Okay, you guys do it now. I showed you how to do this. Do it now on my authority. So um, we're there. You know, this is this is what's happening for us right now. Um, how do you think, see things connected here uh, unfolding? I, I think a lot of our listeners are probably aware of um, uh, uh, what's going on with CERN and, and the Lodge Hydrant Colosa. Um It was restarted again this you know this year, and now they're doing some dark energy. Um, I, I think the fact that um, the head of CERN, you know, admitted we might send something into another dimension or something from another dimension might uh, 
enter into our dimension it means they've already accomplished it well you know the, the moment that I saw what CERN was doing and I, and I mentioned about their work in, in my Beguile series because it's very important for people to realize that for a long period of time the people that have been involved in black magic uh, and from an alchemical sen- standpoint have been trying to get to the root aspect of what is, is truly divine in other words what is first matter and that is what they would consider and call the guard particle because even Albert Einstein said that all the, the forces we have on Earth, like gravity and whatever, have a common denominator and that you could ever find that common denominator, you would be able to control every aspect of everything else that happened on the globe. And, you know, these are things that um, have been known about for a long period of time. I think that, you know, the understanding of the powerful electromagnetic grid that just forms a web across our world you know, it's kind of a grid of what we call of ley lines. It was called the Dragon Pass a long time ago back in China, these ley lines. But, you know, they were used for satanic powers, uh, that, you know, because it does allow uh, people to harness this energy. And, again, I think it has something to do with this universal collective consciousness that I have tried to, to bring forth in, in my work because if you look at how these grids run across the earth and you find out, that um, the connection to that and how the the Gothic cathedrals that the Knights Templar built on these particular oracle sites and how they were used and how they went these illuminated people had to go down into the crypts, which you know were under the true holy of holies in in, in the cathedral to be able to illuminate the mind. If you if you look at that and then you look at the fact that that Earth, again, has a 7.8 hertz of resonance, so that science actually calls this uh, human resonance. Anytime that you start messing and, and doing anything with these natural ways, any kind of technology, including what is called, uh, the, one of the first things I noticed was doing some major stuff with this was something called HARP, H-A-A-R-P. Right. And these In things were capable of, you know, inflicting unusual radio wave patterns that cover our entire planet through entanglement properties. And so anytime that, again, you're using, whether you're using CERN, HARP, uh, anything of that magnitude, you're reaching into an area of physics that is going to entangle some properties. And literally, like I say, the intent was to cause vibratory states and changes so that you could, what I believe, pierce the veil. And the moment that we pierce that veil, <laughs> you know, I think that we're going to see more and more of this evilness coming out of it because, you know, the end of days it talks about in Revelation about the abyss being open and all these weird things coming Revelation out of the 18. abyss. Revelation 18, yeah. Yes, that I think that that's what we're looking at is the possibility of really happening. And, and, I, and, you know, never in any time in our history before now, uh, Brother Casper, have we ever had all this happening at the same time? I mean, literally, we're having the earthquakes in diverse places. We're having the information age technology and, and knowledge increasing at such a level. Wars and rumors time, of wars. Yeah. Yes, the wars and then the deception that you don't know the truth Dumbins. from the lies. And, and then on top of this, we've got the deaths of all these animals that are happening, you know, planet over and then we've got changes in the moon sun and stars and then we've got this type of technology that we're playing with where we're trying to play god that i think is setting us up you know it's got to be that we are living at the end of days because all of that is is mentioned in in our in our scriptures so so why so few churches are, are, are absolutely you know um, the majority of churches won't touch this they won't talk about healing they won't talk about prophecy, and yet the Scripture tells us, you know, precisely it's a blessing to study the words of the prophecy of this book, um, Revelation, right? But, so here's all this stuff going on, the secular world is sucked into all the E.T. movies and uh, Hollywood, you know, Hollywood, whatever you call it, um, they're, they're coming out with this, you know, agenda, the X-Files, all that, and yet the church wants to walk around with blinders on. What's with it? What's your opinion well, on that? I really think that we're looking at uh, the transition, again, in Revelation, from the Church of Philadelphia to the Church of Laodicea. I think that those of us who are left that are really, truly have the mind of the Church of Philadelphia and understanding what's going on, but when you look at what the Church of Laodicea is, 
then they're a mixed. They're, they, they don't believe in the true power that they are going. In other words, church has become a social club. It's become a place to jump up and down and uh, scream and holler. It's a place to be entertained. It's not a place to really listen to the Word of God. And when you start bringing in uh, people who know how to play music that affects the pineal gland, I mean, some of the, the top, what I would say, Christian artists, if you look at their album covers, they're filled with new age things like sorcery that I'm talking about. And then if you listen at some of the beats they're using or some of the mm-hmm. particular chords that they use in the songs or if they're doing songs that are continuous, repetitious with those beats. and what, I mean, literally, we're getting to the point that we are no longer going to church. We're just going to... Uh, to be entertained, and then if it's like that, then it's no different than going to the Lions Club or whatever. They're going to meet, eat, and go do your thing. And and unfortunately, that's what the end of days church is, is is coming or is told to us is going to happen. And I think that's what we're seeing. There's a strong delusion. There is just absolutely what we were warned about that people you know don't feel the need. They're involved with self. They don't they don't feel condemnation. They don't seek salvation. And then when you've got somebody like a a pope stand up and say, hey, we all worship the same God by different names, and it doesn't really mean that you have to be baptized or you don't have to seek salvation or everybody's going kind of heaven kind of situation. When you hear that and it's constantly bombarded into your brain that Jesus is a good, loving God, he's not going to send anybody to hell. I mean, that's the the thing that people like to go and hear. They don't hear the old-timey pastors like I grew up with that, preached hellfire and brimstone, and you would leave the church <laughs> almost trembling, thinking, if I don't get back there, something happens to me, Dad, for forgiveness, you know. We, we are living in times that we don't feel that. We, we feel like that what we're doing is fine, and, and that God loves everybody, and they don't, nobody's saying, yes, he does love everybody, and he wants everybody to go back to paradise, but... He has expectations, he has rules, he has guidelines. And if you don't follow his guidelines and seek that salvation, which he freely gives to anybody to ask, if you don't seek it, then, you know, one day, whether it be through a catching away or through a great wrath or for his, you know, the day of the Lord, the return of Jesus, if you're not together with that, then the time is gone by. And if you die or uh, or you're caught off guard, then you're going to spend eternity in hell. And it's nobody's fault but your own because there's no way that I don't believe that everybody from the time that they begin to understand this is wrong and that's wrong, that they don't feel that tug on their consciousness like you shouldn't have eaten this or you shouldn't have done mm-hmm. that or that was bad. But a lot of people think, well, nobody saw me. You know, I can get away with it. Nobody saw me. But what we're proving, what we started the, the, the talk off with tonight, is we now know we've got telescopes just saying something's right here with us, watching us. So, the Lord's like watching. I've always said, yeah. you can't get away with it. The, the, the Lord God Almighty is, is recording everything. I mean, forget everything. about the CAA and, you know, Her Majesty's Secret Service and NSA and all those people that are listening in. God Almighty, I mean, he's watching. He knows your innermost thoughts. Nobody else exactly. knows. The devil doesn't know that one, but he knows our innermost thoughts. And that's right. He knows everything. And I think one of the most interesting things is when I was in my master's uh, degree, and we had a, a professor that was teaching us about uh, the hypnotism and, and what goes on in that. And I, for the first time, because I had always thought hypnotism was something that was fake, that was just a play thing. Mm. And then I really was able to see how it is used and how your brain hasn't forgotten anything and literally saw people being taken back to the first grade, and they would look around with their eyes closed, talk in a language that was like a child, write in a language with their eyes closed, they could write their name like they did in first grade with one of those huge big pencils on a piece of paper. But they could literally say what the teacher had on, what the kid in front of them, who it was, who it was behind them, what they were dressed in. They could take them to a day that they enjoyed, like say uh, when they were second, third grade at the park or whatever. They could relive it almost like they were seeing it all over again. And I know uh, my father was a pilot, and uh, he stalled a plane out when he was young and came to the ground and crashed. And he said the thing that was most unusual about his experience was that everything in his life flashed before his eyes. And I have heard 
people who have been on, you know, the near-death bed experiences say, if they were able to be revived and come back, how everything played out. That They not only felt their feelings, but if they had hurt somebody, they felt that person's feelings and how it hurt them upon themselves. So I, from a, from a scientific standpoint, I will say that there's nothing, nothing, that you have thought, whatever, alone, in your private room, and whatever, that God does not have record of. He has record of every last ounce of it. Well, it does tell us about the Lamb's Book of Life, and uh, things are being written down in that book. We know that. There's a number of references. So, you know, it does remind me of Revelations 3.16, um, what's going on right now as you're saying this, you know, the Lord says, so then, you know, thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot. I spew you out of my mouth because thou sayest I'm rich and I'm increased with goods and I've need of nothing and knowest not that you are wretched and miserable and poor, blind and naked. You know, um, this is what's going on. All these churches that are just running down the wrong pathway here. Um, I, I just pray that somebody's paying attention tonight to what we're sharing here. This is, this is um, absolutely vital to your life and, and your eternal life. Well, I think that's the thing, is that we have never been taught, even in churches, we have never been taught the preciousness that God placed inside of us as human beings. I mean, we're, we're, we've been led through, you know, schools and, and our public school educations and whatever to think we came from apes and that we're no different than the other animals and, and da-da-da. We are not really taught when God created Adam and he took Adam and put him in the garden, that he put in him that breath of life. And that is a very, very special thing. It is something that God gives and he gives back and it goes back to him when you die. And it's going to have to go through judgment. Uh, and that you need to, you need to guard that and, and be proud that you have this. And, and if anything, that is the one thing that Satan wants to take from you. He knows that he is going to spend forever and ever and ever away from God in a darkness and a terrible place. And he just wants to take everybody that he can, that God created in his image, with him. I mean, it's like a, it's like a chess game. He's sitting there trying to figure out how can he can put something in front of you to make you stumble and fall so that you don't make it into heaven. And it's a constant battle on a daily basis that we always have to be aware that when our conscience immediately says, you know, now you shouldn't have done that, Joy, or you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have said that the way you said it, that you don't correct it. At, right at that point in time that you don't say, Lord, forgive me if I have hurt someone, if I have said something wrong, if I have done this inappropriately, to ask for forgiveness, to get right with God. Because the more that you seek Him, the more you will feel that tug. Uh, the closer you get to God, I'm telling you immediately, if you do something wrong, it's like, whoo, right in your face. Right. The further you get away, the less you hear that. Vo- you hear it, but you don't hear it with the strength that you hear it when you walk a closer walk with God. It, we, we often hear um, people using, you know, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, open the door. I'll come into him, I'll sup with him, and he with me. They, they use that trying to get you saved. And yet, that's written to the church. It's not written to the unbeliever. That's you've right. Got Jesus saying, I'm, I'm, you know, you've left me out. You, know, you, you got saved, he washed you clean from all unrighteousness. Then how many sins did you continue in? It's time to get back and get right with him. Make him first in your life on everything. I know we're about getting close to the hour at the end here. Um, and I did want to ask you, your, uh, your take on like, things like Project Blue Book. I, I know you're aware of all yes. that going on. So maybe you can... Well, you know, the, the thing about uh, Project Blue Book and, and, and all the things that have happened over the course of years, uh, going all the way back to what I would say Project Paperclip, where, where you know, the Nazis were so involved in remote viewing. And I fully believe, you know, if you read uh, uh, the Nazi work that, that Hitler did, I mean, Kant, and you understand that he was connected to a very spiritual realm in which he and his, uh, the people that worked with him, especially the, the scientists, they did remote viewing and, and they were always trying to make contact with the spiritual realm. Uh, and having researched that, and know that when, you know, the forces uh, fought against Hitler, that we ended up taking half of the scientists from that group uh, into our 
uh, country, and then Russia took the other half. And of course, the Russians we started NASA made their cosmonaut yeah. pro- program, yeah. and we made the you know NASA program. We would probably neither one of us would have had the the science uh, of uh, studying the, the heavens without uh, Nazi scientists involved in it. And uh, you know, when all that started happening, we began having like the nineteen uh, forty seven supposedly crash of of uh, of a disk out in New Mexico that supposedly it was hidden and covered up because they said that, you know, in Roswell that it was first, it was a disk, and then, of course, it was covered up as if it was uh, nothing but a balloon. But then when you look at the people like the, the the man and his son who he took and showed the beams to that had the little writing on it and how uh, he has gone around the country and showed these particular little writings you can look, which is interesting to me, some of the things that even in uh, Sumerian text, back in Egyptian hieroglyphics, they have a similarity to that kind of thing. And who was, who were the people that were doing that kind of thing? Well, they were um, the fallen angels. So the fact that these uh, so-called little beings that people see when they enter into their rooms, into the you know, from, I believe, walk from the spiritual realm right into the the physical realm. The more the demonic that you participate in, the more you're going to get little visits like that. That they literally are demonic forces, and uh, and and you know you can look at Project Blue Book. You see the people who were involved in doing the cover-ups, and you see the amount of things that have been released and blacked out, and and you know it just really upsets me when you go to Freedom Information and you try to get anything in regard to uh, UFOs and that kind of thing. You'll get some documentation, but it's all blacked out. I mean, they have some pages only have one word on the whole page. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, uh, you've got um, some proof that something was going on, but it, the truth, they just don't want the truth to really be known about. Well, it was it. interesting with the Citizens Disclosure Meeting in 2013 and, you know, Washington, D.C., where you had the Honorable uh, Paul Hillier come forward and say the astounding. UFOs are as real as airplanes flying overhead, and then he comes out and says uh, a little while later in that dialogue, um, I know of two extraterrestrials working in the U.S. government. Then he goes on Moscow television on Sophie Company and talks about you know eighty different varieties of extraterrestrials amongst us. I mean, um, <laughs> I mean, here's a man that had access to top secrets in Canada, so. Um, well, yes, and I and I do believe that, especially in the people who have, a, have witnessed some of this, who went to their deathbeds and right on their deathbeds gave testimony about some things that they have seen. But, you know, it goes back to the days of Noah. It says the end of the days are going to be like the days of Noah. What was happening in the days of Noah, what brought about the flood, was the fact that these fallen angels were going and having sexual relationships with the daughter of men, and they were creating these ungodly, you know, you know beings. So most of the things that uh, that have been told is that in these underground bunkers and these these black budget uh, science kind of things, uh, even going like I say back to the days of Hitler and his underground group, they were already you know messing with genetics and trying to mix things together. So yes, I do believe that um, some of the things that these people are telling are quite quite real. Yeah. And that we have some very strange things walking among us that are not human. It, it sounds like there was gene splicing going on then. I mean, in the, in the you know King Nimrod being the first uh, basic world yes. dictator and the Tower of Babel and all, and 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 it seems to me that was probably some kind of power base rather than a a building an absolute height when you really you know study that. Um, which is probably like today's internet system. I mean, with the ley lines you were talking about earlier. Yes, uh, in fact, it connects all those particular temples and things that were built, including the pyramids and all the pyramids down in you know in South America. And all, everything is on those particular ley lines, and they're connected, and they run all over the, the the world. And they're and they're talked about in the oldest historical books that the Chinese have. So, yes, there's something very unique and. Uh, strange about that and that is that to lurk energy is a, a very strange thing because if you have ever done dowsing and looking for water you can feel the force that pulls on those dragon nodes when you do a cross across those dragon nodes like that you will feel and that's how people were able to douse for water years ago mm-hmm. and find wells so it is a very true realistic you know it's not something somebody it's not a conspiracy theory 
And when you go back and you look at Mount Heron, where all those fallen angels are supposed to have come down, uh, you can see uh, that that was on, on one of those on the 33-degree parallel line, and most of the things fall on that. So it's not that the people were disjointed. They were all connected, and I'll always say that had something to do with the collective consciousness that I'm talking about, and that's one of the reasons the secret sciences always use these pyramids as, uh, as their all-seeing eye, that they're connected to it. Right. Well, there's... I think we're just sort of scratching the surface tonight. I can't wait to get you back on so we can talk about these things in, in, in more depth. But um, I know we're probably down to the last uh, few minutes of the program, and there's most likely somebody listening tonight, several people that, that need a touch of, of, of the truth of the Holy Spirit to come, and, and Jesus Christ of Nazareth name, Messiah Yeshua. So, Joy, why don't you um, be so kind as just to pray for anybody out there that's maybe struggling with fear of, how this is unfolding, um, or they just need to come into a, a, a honest relationship with Christ tonight. Well, let's just bow our heads and just and, and just pray together in believing that anyone that's listened to this program, that if they have just lost sight of, of what they were maybe taught in Sunday school or in church, or they've had questions and they couldn't find the answers, that there are answers, and that Christ came to us to save us, to to guide us, and if you will turn back to him, he will lead you back to where you need to be. And I just pray right now that your mind will be released from any of these demonic things that have attached themselves to you, and that you are able to look up and just ask for forgiveness of the sins that you've committed, and just feel the refreshing feeling that Christ is just pouring out his love and his his understanding that that we are his children and that he wants us to return back to paradise. And we just pray for our brothers and sisters because we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And I, I have such a compassion and I want so bad for people to see the way and not be lost to these satanic things that are going on around us because it is here to destroy us. And we have just got to stand together and be strong. And I just pray that God will just give us the strength to be Christian soldiers, to stand firm, to know that the fight is not uh, long and that we, in the end, will win. And we just thank you tonight for the opportunity to share and to, and to reach out and just to try to put our arms around each listener and help them come back into the body of Christ and know that you are loved, you are appreciated, and God wants us as his children to be with him forever and i just pray that blessing upon all of us this night in jesus mighty name amen amen i agree with you in jesus almighty name with two or more to gather together in his name miraculous things that happen and so we just thank you father god right now that blind eyes are seeing again and deaf ears are opening and lame are getting up and walking and diseases are just vanishing it's because you already paid for all of this you paid for people's healing it's part of salvation so we just thank you lord Bless everyone that's um, hearing the sound of our voices tonight. Dr. Joy, how can people get in touch with you and get your books? The best way for them to, to uh, get in touch with me or see anything about my research is at www.drjoy, and that's D-R-J-O-Y-E. It's joy with an E dot com. And all my books, uh, my YouTube, my upcoming radio shows, archive radio show links are there, and my email is there, and uh, uh, you know, if they want to ask a question, I would love to have them send me a question if they have a question because my hope is that I can at least get them started in a direction to try to find answers to any of the questions they might have. So everything's there. The links to all my books, to my music, everything you can just click on and it'll take you to Amazon or Barnes and Noble, wherever uh, iTunes that you would need to purchase anything. Ah, oh, fantastic. Well, I encourage everybody to check it out. Um... Dr. Joy just has a, a, a tremendous wealth of insights to share with you. So definitely check the it out and um, tell people about this program. It'll be archived and they can re-listen. So um, I'm not going to say what I normally say tonight because apparently LA is not going to do a, a show after me tonight live anyways. So I can't say my, my line there. But uh, we will hopefully say it soon that you can stay tuned for my maid Elma Marzuli. But um, anyways, we're just so excited to have Dr. Joy with us, and we've still got a few minutes here. So, um, again, you know, it says in John 9.31, we know that God hears not sinners, but if anybody be a worshiper of God and does his will, then he hears them. And um, just get in that place of, you know, 
it's good to get in place of praising God and, and thanking Him. But when you cross over in that line of worship, then then all kinds of possibilities happen. So until next week, thank you so much, Dr. Joy, for joining us. And we will see you for another spiritual counter. God bless everyone. Thanks. Without any restraint You're the only way The truth and life That makes me free In adoration I worship you, Lord In adoration I give you everything Tonight